So about three quarters of the way through the trip, I'm having a miserable, rotten time. I'm depressed, I'm lonely, I haven't contracted a single sexually transmitted disease. I figure I'm gonna die alone, and the sooner, the better. So I start ignoring all the advice from the Center for Disease Control and the guidebooks. First thing I do, I'm in Bangkok, I start eating off the street carts. So this is a typical street cart, it's on mountain bike tires. And as you can see here, all of the food is just sitting out in the air, but it's you know, 30 baht, which are 30 baht's about a dollar, a dollar for dinner, worth the risk. If I started eating off the food carts in Bangkok, I eat off food carts all up and down the coast of Vietnam, in Cambodia. I never got sick, never met anyone who, and never met anyone on my trip who got sick from eating at uh, any of the food carts. So I started with food, and if you're gonna have food, you might as well sample the local vintages. So this, is, actually, this is Vietnamese snake wine. And uh, this is actually a big bottle, it's about this high. You've heard of the tequila from uh, Mexico, it's got the worm in it. Vietnam, they're not screwing around. Uh, these bottles have an entire cobra in the bottle. So the snake wine is supposed to have all these uh, mystical properties, it's supposed to be great for the male virility. In this particular vintage, there's a, you can see the cobra, and in his mouth is a scorpion. Uh, I did sample the wine, it didn't do much for my virility, but I survived, I was fine, uh, had kind of a rubbery, snaky aftertaste. Another thing I started doing was uh, a lot of these countries, they don't have the same liability laws that we have in the US. So uh, they offer these activities called adventure sports. New Zealand has two islands. There's a North Island and a South Island. And the South Island, there's a town called Queenstown, which is known for adventure sports. One of the activities I tried in Queen, something called riverboarding. You've all heard of uh, whitewater rafting. So riverboarding is basically whitewater rafting without the raft. You're on something called boogie board, which is a giant kickboard. And then, you, as you can see here, these guys are about to enter the rapids. Um, here's another photo. So this is just somebody's head. They're in the rapids. They're wearing a helmet. I'm guessing they're filming. I'm assuming they survived. I just barely survived, but, and I wouldn't recommend doing this. And again, I mentioned the, the liability laws. So uh, these activities, they give you a form to fill out, and it's pretty much one paragraph, and it says, uh, you know, if you get injured or hurt, eh, bummer. And while in New Zealand, there was another activity I tried. This is bungee jumping. And the way it works is they bind your feet up with a cord, and then you walk to the end of the platform, And then you turn around and you ask the guy, are you sure this is a safe and a good idea? And he's busy doing something else. So you just jump. And when you jump, you yell, mommy. And you bounce up and down for a while. And once you stop bouncing up and down, they reel you up with a, a big winch back up to the platform. So I did this three times. I did it in South Africa. I did it twice in New Zealand. This particular jump is in New Zealand, and that's about 450 feet. Um, the one I did in South Africa was, was considerably higher. It's about 660 feet. So that's about two football fields. Um, has anyone been to the, uh, the Pru in Boston? And you know they've got that restaurant on top, the top of the hub. So this is the equivalent of going up to the top of the hub and then jumping out the window. And they measure uh, the, the height of these things. They measure from the platform all the way down to the ground. Um, and the cord doesn't go all the way down to the ground because that would, that would hurt a lot. So the cord generally goes about two thirds of the way down. I've gone skydiving and it, this is much worse because you know, when you're skydiving, you know, you're up so high, you look down, the ground's kind of fuzzy and surreal. Uh, bungee jumping, you're not up that high and you can see every rock and tree and you know, anything you might hit if there was a problem. Bank of the river, where rescuers pulled her out, battered and bruised, 
But even then, her ordeal wasn't over. When I was first put out of the water, they put me on my back. And so all the water that I inhaled um, meant that I couldn't breathe. So um, I made them roll me onto my side. And that's when I started coughing out water and blood. The Safari company that organized the jump calls it 111 meters of pure adrenaline on its website. But another look at Erin's jump shows just how lucky she was. Yes, I think it's definitely a miracle that I survived. Nazmin Satri, Al Jazeera. Finally, it's time to show you the one thing I feared more than youth hostels filled with youths, great white sharks, bungee jumping. Those of you who've never used a squat toilet, let me just teach you a little bit about it. It was my experience. Inside the little room, I reach for a light switch and can't find one. I reach for the door and can't find one. Against the back wall, there's a hole in the floor surrounded by raised porcelain footrests. Across from it, a saucepan floats in a plastic barrel filled with water. Something with legs and a tail skitters up the wall and onto the ceiling. A faucet protruding from the tiled wall drip drips into the plastic barrel. A boiling sensation intensifies deep inside me. I drop my pants and hover over the hole. I grab the rim of the barrel with one hand for stability. With the other hand, I point myself back like a little hose. Money starts to slip out of my pockets. As I go to catch the cash, my, um, Apparatus springs free and sprays my sandals, feet, and pants. All I can do is let it all go. So I, I think you get the idea. Uh, if you want to know more, you'll have to read my book.